Over 2,000 military helicopters are manufactured worldwide every year. They are lethal, destructive, and a single unit can cost more than $30 million to produce. But how are they actually made? How is it possible for a machine weighing more than 10 tons to fly, attack, and survive in the middle of combat? Well, today we will travel to Russia, home to the largest military helicopter factory on the planet, where more than five units are assembled daily, ready to be sent to hundreds of armies around the world and change the course of a war. So, get ready, because today you are going to discover how one of the most lethal war machines in the sky is mass-produced. Let's begin. Step number one, design and development. It all begins long before a single piece of metal is welded. It's not just about building a simple helicopter. It's about designing a war machine capable of flying at over 300 kilometers per hour, withstanding impacts, launching missiles with surgical precision, and continuing to operate even if half the engine is missing. To achieve this, a team of more than 200 engineers, technicians, and military experts work for months on a design that must be lethal and practically indestructible. It all starts in state-of-the-art 3D modeling programs, where every component is designed in detail, from the shape of the fuselage, the location of the main rotor and engine, to the cockpit armor, the cable routing, and all the sensors. When all the parts have been modeled, the complete design is put to the test in advanced virtual simulators. There, the helicopter faces extreme combat scenarios, explosions, gunfire, violent turbulence, and even engine failures mid-flight. Only when the design passes all the tests is it approved and the preparation of the materials begins. For the fuselage, aeronautical aluminum combined with titanium is used. A lightweight mixture, yet capable of resisting deformation and the direct impact of up to two anti-aircraft missiles without collapsing. Critical areas such as the rotor shaft, anchor points, and frontal armor are made with heat-treated steel, the same type used in combat tanks. And for interior panels, fairings, and secondary structures, reinforced carbon fiber compounds and polymers are used, which help reduce weight without sacrificing rigidity or safety. All these materials arrive at the factory in large blocks and sheets and are stored with millimeter precision in industrial hangars. Step number two, forging and component manufacturing. With the materials already stored and classified, one of the most impressive steps of the process begins converting blocks of metal into parts designed to survive combat. Although many systems such as avionics, engines, or weapon modules arrive from specialized military suppliers, the most critical structural parts are manufactured directly at the plant. Ingots of titanium and high-strength steel are melted in industrial furnaces that exceed 1600 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the metal becomes liquid and is poured into molds that shape the main rotor supports, the transmission shaft, parts of the landing gear, side reinforcements, and the central chassis of the helicopter. Once solidified, these pieces go to CNC machining centers, where precision lathes carve and fine-tune them until they are perfect. There is no room for error here. A small deviation can cause catastrophic failures in mid-flight. Then, the sheets of aeronautical aluminum are cut and molded with hydraulic presses that apply more than 1,000 tons of pressure forming the external fuselage, the cockpit, and the armored panels that cover the internal structure. In isolated rooms, the main rotor blades are manufactured. Enormous aerodynamic structures more than 6 meters long formed layer by layer with high-strength fiber compounds and resins. Each one is adjusted and balanced by hand because a single gram of imbalance can generate fatal vibrations and cause the helicopter to lose control in mid-flight. When each component is finished, it is subjected to laser scanning and dimensional verification. If a piece has any defect, no matter how small, it is discarded immediately. Only the parts that pass all the controls are ready to move on to the next process. Step number three, main structure assembly. With every part approved and ready, one of the most critical moments of the process begins, joining all those components into a single structure. In enormous hangars, the helicopter's skeleton starts to take shape. Robotic cranes position the central fuselage with surgical precision, while technicians, using lifting platforms and hydraulic tools, assemble the front and rear sections to form a single body. Here, the main rotor supports are also fixed, structural reinforcements are integrated, and the armored side panels that will protect the crew in combat are installed. The landing gear, engine mounts, and the compartments for the weaponry are also fitted. That's when one of the most important components of the entire aircraft is incorporated, the engines. 
Manufactured in specialized military air propulsion facilities, these high-performance engines generate over 2,000 horsepower and can keep the helicopter flying even with serious damage. Each aircraft carries two of these turbines, and each unit is installed with special cranes on its reinforced mount. After that, it's time to install the main rotor blades. Each one is over 6 meters long, weighs more than 100 kilograms, and must spin at thousands of revolutions per minute to keep the aircraft suspended in the air with total stability. In the end, what remains still doesn't fly or shoot, but it's already starting to show the imposing shape of a true combat helicopter. Step number four, systems and electronics. Installation. With the entire structure assembled, it's time to bring this flying machine to life. Specialized technicians begin to deploy kilometers of internal wiring, hidden sensors, armored fiber optics, and critical connections that will activate every navigation, combat, and defense system. Everything is perfectly integrated within the fuselage. Nothing can be exposed. On the battlefield, a single poorly protected cable can mean a missed missile or something much worse. This is also where the helicopter's true brains are installed. Military avionics units designed to withstand interference, direct impacts, and continue to operate even with severe damage. These processors control everything – long-range radars, night vision, electronic countermeasures, and threat detection systems. At the same time, the armored cockpit is mounted, with bulletproof glass and seats designed to absorb impacts. And, of course, it's the turn of the weapon system. All attack controls are integrated – levers, joysticks, buttons, and systems that allow for launching missiles or opening fire even in extreme situations. When everything is assembled, connected, and calibrated, the technicians activate the electrical system and for the first time the helicopter comes to life. Step number five, weapon reinstallation. The helicopter is moved to the most restricted area of the entire factory, the weapon integration area. Here, specialized technicians, using articulated cranes and hydraulic platforms, install the attack modules one by one, missile supports, automatic cannons, rocket launchers, and side machine guns. Everything is designed so that the pilot can attack with millimeter precision without losing maneuverability, even in the middle of enemy fire. One of these helicopters can carry up to 16 missiles on each side, plus a frontal rotating cannon capable of firing more than a thousand rounds per minute, enough to destroy an enemy base in a matter of seconds. Each system is secured with reinforced steel bolts, connected to its sensors, and calibrated with surgical accuracy. But it doesn't end here. After assembly, the helicopter is moved to the dry testing area, where each firing system is tested without using real ammunition. Only when every weapon and button responds with absolute precision is this phase approved. And at that moment, the helicopter ceases to be a simple machine with engines and becomes an aerial predator armed to the teeth. Step number six, functional tests and first flight. With the helicopter fully assembled, armed and wired, the time has come to ensure it is truly ready to survive in combat. First, technicians check every system, one by one. From the engines to the firing controls, everything is re-verified under strict military protocols. If everything is in order, the first full power-on occurs. The engines start, the blades begin to spin, and the helicopter vibrates as it reaches its first revolutions. This moment is key. Any anomalous vibration or unexpected noise could signal an internal failure. If that happens, the helicopter goes directly back to the technical area for review. But if all goes well, the most exciting and decisive moment of the entire process arrives – the flight test. The helicopter is moved to the test runway, where test pilots lift it for the first time. During the flight, tactical maneuvers are performed, such as low-altitude flights, emergency stops, tight turns, and simulated power loss. Step number seven – final paint, delivery, and distribution. Each aircraft is moved to the tactical paint area, where specialized operators, assisted by robotic cranes and articulated arms, apply several layers of camouflage adapted to the environment where it will operate – green for jungles, beige for deserts, or gray for naval zones. The paint used is not just any paint. It is an advanced coating that resists abrasion and extreme heat and makes it practically invisible to enemy radars. Once dry, protective varnishes are applied, and tactical emblems such as the serial number, squadron shield, and military insignia are stamped to identify which army and country it belongs to. Finally, the helicopter is moved to the delivery hangar. And here comes the key question. How are these beasts, which can measure up to 20 meters long and weigh more than 10 tons, sent to military bases around the world? 
Although it seems complicated, the process is perfectly organized. Each helicopter is partially disassembled. The rotor blades and some auxiliary modules are removed, and it is placed in enormous armored military containers so that it can be transported by air, land, or sea. A journey that is carried out under strict military security because the loss or sabotage of a single unit could cost up to $40 million and much more if it falls into the wrong hands. Once it arrives at its destination, the helicopter is reassembled and officially enters service, ready to patrol, attack, and survive in the middle of a war. Finally, tell us, did you imagine this whole process? Would you dare to pilot a machine like this? Leave us your answer in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next factory tour.